Hey guys, it's your boy Yort here, back with my uh, training journal. Thanks for joining me again. Um, just want to start off today with saying, again, nothing too crazy with EI. Um, this whole week and every week is just really getting ready for our test in two weeks. Uh, we're going through um, a process in which our most uh, our students that aren't taking the test this year, they're the ones that are going to be. Um, essentially helping us walk through it. They're gonna be telling us where to go here, to bow, to get ready for the next person while they're taking their test, just to kind of keep it going along smoothly so everyone, you know, it doesn't take more than an hour for us to do. Because this is a very different test. Because, you know, like I've said, every year prior, we've been uh, driving to Denton, staying up there, and then our sensei from Japan, Tanita sensei, flies in, spends the weekend, and he, first day, uh, kind of workshops with us and then the second day we all test in front of him and then he recommends us based on that viewing of our test now this year because of covid um well last year because of covid it got canceled but because this year of covid uh some of us have the vaccine and that we're all staying safe that we are starting to record some of the tests to send in uh, at least from yondan yondan or fourth uh stage down uh, we're recording our tests and we're sending them in. Exciting things. But basically, we're just getting the people who, are, um, who aren't who are testing to help with administration of it. And then those of us who are testing, we're just practicing our tests nonstop. All the was that we're doing, we're just practicing them nonstop. Every day we go in, we go in, and I do the written portion again and again and again. Just so the day of when I go in, um, I can go in and get it right. Because you only have one chance... And you don't get to like, you don't get to take it out and it's not open note. It's not, you know, you don't get to take as much time as you want on it. You need to get it done. So I'm excited. I'm ready for that. I have a hundred on my test consistently, so I'm doing pretty good. Uh, the Waza are doing pretty good. I just need to keep practicing them constantly again and again and again. Uh, but before we get into kind of what I wanted to talk about today, I wanted to start with our sponsor today, H2O. My sponsor and yours. Drink it up. You're going to need a lot of it, and I need a lot of it. I started um, that new training schedule that I had posted last week. It's going okay. It's kind of difficult to keep up with the handwork because I'm by myself, and I don't want to keep just using the punching bag. It's kind of annoying because I like using it for cardio sometimes, but it's also very frustrating because I don't, like I'm saying, I don't just want to hit a bag. I don't have anyone here that can teach, that can like do mitts with me or that really has any kind of handwork for me to work with. And I don't really want to go pay for a class or, you know, go join up some boxing gym. I don't really don't have the time or the money for that. I got to teach someone around me how to use mitts so I can train with them because I don't like... <sighs> Gotta, I need moving targets. I need moving targets so I can work on them. But one of the things I did want to uh, talk about was I wanted to bring up a collie stick practice, which is something that I am very fond of. It's probably my, one of my favorite weapons to work with. Uh, I haven't had much formal training in our niece or Escrima, but I've had a lot of like peripheral training through workshops, through just you know my own training constantly looking up new patterns with the double stick i i found a couple patterns that i'll use on a punching bag or a couple patterns that are really useful for stunt work that i've learned and i'll just use them again and again for different kinds of combat or just different kinds of training just to get my hands flowing in a correct in in a kind of correct way because that flow state is really the the, the where you want to train the patterns the flow state of going between each one so I kind of wanted to show you while I talk about uh, what I mean. So for the first couple patterns that we have, these are extremely basic. And I am planning on doing um, a separate video on all the patterns that I know comfortably and would kind of want to show y'all. So to start, I wanted to start with standard six, which is the most basic collie stick pattern. It starts with a sweeping or a lob tick through the high line, a lob tick through the low line, and then a wa tick in the high line again to chamber underneath on the other side. And then the other side just does the same with a lob tick or a strike through with the high line, another lob tick, a strike through with the low line, and then a bounce or a wa tick off of the high line to chamber underneath the other side once more. Very easy, very simple, 
and it's it's the standard one that all the other patterns are based on from this point or some of the patterns not all of them next is called heaven six it's really the only it's the same thing as standard six except the lob tick in the low line is changed to a lob tick in the high line so it's all high line all the time so the next one is called halo six because your your the first hand that moves circles around your head like a halo blocking it from attacks and just like heaven six it's all in the high line but unlike heaven six um all of the strikes are to the same target so instead of it bouncing off after both strikes have struck through the first time it comes or the first hand goes around to come around and strike at the last time again on the same target this is a really handy one and the variation between this one that I have found or that I have found most useful is kind of changing it between that which is the standard way that I know it and then a more basic way of doing it which is like a moderation between it and standard six which is that first strike goes around the head the second strike does a lob tick but through the low line and that high that uh one coming through hits again at that first target the last pattern that I want to talk about is really simple, but it involves a scissoring motion with your hands that's kind of different from six. It's called four pattern. Uh, you chamber your hands on either side, left or right, and the pattern goes high, and this is with striking on the same side, high, low, low, high. Now. The four pattern itself just stays on one side. You can transition it to the other by at that last strike striking through with both hands so that you chamber on the other side, whether that be right or left, and then repeating the pattern there of high, low, low, high. And there's all kinds of different patterns that can go through from that and that can be expanded on that. Like there's eight, there's a whole pattern with the four, with the four strikes that you can do with a partner where you can chamber thrust through and then change sides and it's really really cool i don't know if i'll be able to record that but those four patterns um uh, standard six heaven six and then halo six with the variation and then four pattern are some of the most easiest and most basic patterns that i train in all the time because they're so easy they're so like you can do them with anything. You can do them with a stick. You can do them with not. I hope you find that a little bit interesting. That's my training journal. That's kind of a little bit my gift to you of those patterns. I know I'm going to be doing another video of them later. So I'm excited for that. Stay tuned. So I'll see you all next week. Thanks for seeing my training journal.